Hey, what's up, my fellow humans? Um, indeed, if you are indeed a human, you could be watching this in some distant part of outer space. I don't know. Um, welcome to this video. I'm going to be crazy. Um, so, welcome to this video. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about my thoughts, my feelings, and kind of a review about the Pokemon Center in London. I went to the opening day today. Not, I would say, the media preview day and the influencers day, which was the day before. Um, so not the official opening day, that one, that was just uh, a pressy thing. We went to the official full day today, uh, Friday, uh, I think it's Friday the 18th of October. Um, so yeah, we went to that today and you'll find out all about uh, my experiences there today. Uh, what did I buy? What are my highs? What are my lows? All of that is coming up in this video. But let's first of all, get on to the most important bit. And that is what? Did I buy? Okay, so let's it's time now to have a look at some of the merchandise I bought. Now, the first thing that I bought is the Pokemon Center. It's one of those, well, it's a Pokemon Center London exclusive, so we're going to have a look at that. So, you can only buy one thing that I will mention. You can only buy anything that's a Pokemon London exclusive. You can only buy one of them. So, you can only buy one of each of them. You can't buy, like, say, two plushies, uh, Pikachu ones, or two. Um, pin badges you can only buy one per item which is good but it still didn't stop them running out though of stuff so that's that but this is a mug it's an exclusive uh, Pokemon London mug it's pretty cool you see there we go Pikachu in various forms uh, and just really kind of cool oh Eevee there pretty cool so yeah it's pretty funky I do like the fact on oh there's a lot of Mew as well it's really cool but if you look at that I do like the fact that they show it raining um, is that what did they think of us? Is that what they think of our weather? That it is raining all the time? Granted, today that was the one thing we didn't get was um, any rain. And look. Oh, Pikachu, so cute. Um, that's pretty cool. So yeah, we're going to uh, box that back up. It's pretty cool. Uh, that mug, for anyone that, that wants to know, that mug was actually fairly... It's probably the cheapest thing I bought. It was £14.50, so... Fourteen fifty for the mug. There you go. Comes with a box. There's drinkware and like a a little idea of what the pattern is on the back there. Oh, and it's microwave and dishwasher safe. So that's a bonus. So there you go. The, the next thing I bought, uh, and surprisingly, you'll be shocked to know this is probably the most expensive thing I bought. This ranked in at about twenty four pounds. Now, this is the t-shirt is in large. Uh, it's a Pokemon London exclusive t-shirt on black. Uh, I went for large because I didn't know if it was a UK large or um, US large or Japanese large. Now, the reason I say that is if you go to Japan, their t-shirt sizes are different than the UK. So I was trying to make sure that I covered and hedged my bets. I don't normally wear large tees. I tried to vary them between large and medium depending on which country I'm in. But it's a pretty cool looking little tee. As I say, it retails at about £24 in the Pokemon store. Um... That's the bottom part of it. So it's literally just to take, like, um, our little friend Posh Pikachu. Um, I nearly said Detective Pikachu then, but that's because they had loads of Detective Pikachu merch there. Part of me was beginning to think that they were just trying to get rid of that. But anyway, so that's pretty cool. And finally, yeah, only got three items because it's all out of the bin badge I was dying to get. I got one thing which I definitely was really aiming to get. It is, of course, you probably saw it there when I brought it in. Pikachu blush is so cute. This re this was twenty pounds. It's actually quite good. Um, I was quite impressed with the price of it. It is just, oh, it's just adorable. I'm sorry. I mean, it is totally adorable. You've got the little umbrella. Look at that. It's so cute. Psyduck umbrella. Is so cute. Um, and the tail on the back. Uh, the bowler hat's quite cute. Fur bricky. Faulty bowler hat there. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Um. It's got a little tie. There's a Pokeballs on the tie. I don't know if you can see that there. So adorable. Really cool. So yeah, that was pretty cool. Not bad for 20 quid. I was actually quite impressed with that because sometimes you can run, these can run quite expensive if you try to buy them online on eBay, I think. Uh, when we were in the queue, we worked out that they were selling these on eBay at around about 30 to 40 quid already. So people are trying to get their money's worth. So that's pretty cool. It's quite chill for that. I kind of told a little bit of a white lie there because I did buy something else. I bought a carrier bag because they were pretty cool. So we will have a quick look at the carrier bag. Obviously, outside is the next game, which is the Pokemon Sword and Shield, out on the 15th of November there, quite handily pointed out, uh, which is around about the time the store closes as well. Um, so, yeah. Uh, 
And then on the other side, it's got a guy. This is the larger bag that they do. I've got a smaller bag on the, which is on the floor currently. Um, but got some other bits in it, from, not from Bergman Centre. But as you can see, the, here's the bag, kind of giving you another look at good old London Pikachu. And uh, then it's got Pokemon Centre London on it. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I did like that. So yeah, that's pretty cool. That was uh surprise surprise. You actually had to pay for these bags. Um, yeah, I know it's insane. I have to pay 25 pence per bag. So whether it's large or medium, it's 25 pence. It's not the UK standard five or 10 B, depending on where you shop. It was actually a completely different um, thing. So it's 25 P a bag. So that was somewhat of a surprise to me, but you know, I'm there. I need the bags to get them home. And also the bags are quite collectible. Um, so I thought, yeah, why not? I'm going to grab two, uh, but definitely got the large one because I got some bags from Japan, which I kept, which are really cool. I didn't check if it's similar to the bags in Japan now, because the reason I say that is in the bags in Japan, when you go to a Pokemon center, the bags there have on the inside here, normally on the inside bits here, they have like Pokemon inside it. Uh, but sadly, it doesn't... No, they didn't. So, essentially, there's just your bog standard plastic bag there with the Pokemon designs on it. So, it's not as collect... It probably will be collectible for some, but not as collectible as the Japanese ones. And my... This is just my humble opinion, really. Um, so, it's my humble opinion. Me. Um, so, yeah. It's a cool cool bag, though. Nonetheless, 25p, depending on... You know, it doesn't depend on size. It's small or large. is 25p. So, yeah. So, that's that. Pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with uh, what I've got there. Um... Uh, yeah, so really cool. So yeah, that's a... but now we're going to talk about the actual. Yeah, let's look at the highs and lows of this experience. Okay, so now let's get on to the highs and the lows, or the good and the bad, which or whatever you want to call it. Uh, right, Pokemon Center London, uh, or Pokemon Pop Up Shop, whichever you want to call it. Now, for me, uh, I'm going to start off. Let's start off with kind of like the let's start off with the lows okay so all the lows um the queue it was okay it was always going to be popular that's let's not kid ourselves it's pokemon it's a massive phenomenon even now even after over 20 20 years it is huge so you can't deny that um i didn't expect it to be that big though i mean we're talking probably over and 10,000 people more than likely would, would be there going through there through the course of that day. That was crazy. So yes, there's going to be a queue. What I didn't expect was the kind of Westfields didn't prepare for this. Neither did the Pokemon Center. Their queue management was awful. When you get there at nine o'clock, uh, like half nine quarter to 10 in the morning, and there's they direct you, they are assuming you know your way around this Westfield Center, and they're directing you to places you don't have a clue about. There's no signage. There's no real security guard presence until you stumble across them. I mean, we, you know, I came in with a, when I walked into Westwood originally, I bumped into a couple of people looking for a Pokemon, Pokemon Center. And then we got separated when we got sent away from the store. And then again, I didn't see them for about five hours after that. And then when I saw them, they were still about 100, 150 people in the queue behind me. And, and I was like, how did that happen? Because we literally were together at the Pokemon store. We left when we got sent. We just got separated because we both got lot. Both routes just got lost trying to find it. So that's a low for me. It really was. And it didn't start figuring out the queue thing until about three or four hours in. And that's that's not good. I mean, I, it, Westfields, come on. You're going to need to get this right now for day two, please. And I think you will. So kind of, please... I'm glad they started to get the idea that this is going to be busy, but they could have taken a bit less time in doing so, and it would have kind of benefited the other people that were there today. So, but I will say this for their credit, the security staff and the staff at Westfield were fantastic. So, straight away, a little away from the lows there, but they were very good. And despite the fact that some of them had no clue what Pokemon was, <laughs> they got a damn education today um because it was that was lovely um so continue with the lows for me the fact that we were promised that none of the merchandise would run out because they limited it to one item from each of the ranges so like one london plush um one london t-shirt so anything from the london range was one per person great love that thanks however when we get there and they've run out of that and they're not going to restock it that's bad because essentially, if you've got the stock out the back, you should put it in. Because not just for my sake, 
but the people that have been queuing behind me for like eight to nine hours, because that's how long the queue got to at one point, nine hours, they could walk into a store with absolutely nothing because you're not restocking. That's bad. So that's a real low for me because you've got to be consistent with what you're putting out on the shelves. You've got to fill it up. You've got to keep that stock level up. If you haven't got the stock, that's fine. But don't make promises like they did because we had a Pokemon store guy who came out and was on walking up and down the queue taking videos and counting on a little clicker. And I kind of twigged that he might be working for the store and I asked him, he said, yes, I am. Um, we're just trying to get things sorted out. Don't worry, we'll have stuff for you guys when you come in. You'll have we'll have all the exclusives. They'll be still there. We we've count we've we kind of planned for this. Um, and, and I was thinking mm, you didn't because you yeah, well, yeah, you have been all looking pretty shocked when you've been walking up and down the queue several times. Uh, so yeah, that was kind of a downer for me. And I think you really do need to um, Pokemon Center. You're probably not watching this. I don't blame you because you probably you're exhausted. Bless you. Um, yeah, it, you need to be more open and honest with your stuff, I think, there, for me. Um, so yeah, that was another low. Um, yeah, the pricing was a bit of a wild one as well, kind of a low for me, because I understand it's, it's Pokemon stuff, is limited, so some of it I get. I get, like, having to pay £20 for a plushie. That's fine, the quality's good, I'm more happy with that. But stuff like a t-shirt, which ranks in more than that, at, like, £24, that was, that was quite expensive. And then a a London tote bag thing, which quality looked okay, and I nearly bought it, but it, again, £24. So it's kind of very inconsistent, really. Um, I was expecting the plush to be more, so I'm kind of glad that it wasn't. But uh, there you go. And then 25p for a carrier bag. Uh, I don't know. It, yeah, the carrier bags, as I said earlier, were collectible, so you can say that that's a fair price, if you will, but when in Japan, they literally just throw the carrier bags at you. And they're really, I mean, the Japan, Japanese carrier bags are amazing. So, and I have a collection of them. Um, so, yeah, I would personally say that you really, there's a difference there. And I, I, you don't mind, if they were as cool as the Japanese ones, I would be more than happy to pay, you know, a pound for them because they are really nice carrier bags. And I realise I'm saying that about carrier bags. Odd. But yeah, overall though, you know, that's just a small thing. 25p is 25p. It's not the end of the earth. And I'm happy with that, I really, but it was still a low. I mean, the pricing is inconsistent there, realistically, I think, because you do need to focus on making sure that things like a t-shirt, I mean, the, some of the fleeces were ridiculous prices. I mean, I think I saw a fleece in there for 60 quid with that, and, and, and it didn't have much on, in the way on it. And even again, when we got there for that, the stock levels of the fleeces were just rubbish. They were virtually all gone. So kind of, you know, I was looking at fleece. I was like, oh, wow, that's right. I actually like this fleece. I like the fact that, you know, there's some cool things on this fleece. And I was considering buying it, but they had none left. And they weren't stocking them up. And I even asked, I asked two members of staff um, about it. And they're like, no, we're not really. And we're, I've got anything out back. And the woman looked at me and said, like, kind of like, yeah, we have, but we're not going to restock it. And I'm like, really should. But anyway, let's move away from that. <laughs> that low and we'll move on to the next low really I guess I just think it was no I think that was that's probably it really I think on the lows thinking about it I mean I think that, that yeah that's enough I think the lows are there the highs let's move to some positive stuff because hey we all need positivity in life we all live in this crazy world we live in now so let's look at some of the positivity positivity the quality of the stuff I mean again loving this um in comparison to some of the ones I've got this is great I love the fact it's and then it's just great. So, yeah. The merchandise itself, some of it was really good. The pin design, which I really wanted and didn't get, gutted. But hopefully I'll try and find a way to get one. But, uh, yeah, that was the designs of it are cool. I like them. They've really got them for the guns there. The variety was good. It was okay, though. I mean, a lot of stuff. I mean, gutted again. The Charizard that I wanted, that I saw, which was really cool. Plush had sold out as well. The only thing was it had a Mewtwo plush, and the Mewtwo plush looked really weird. It did not look like Mewtwo. I'm there going, hmm, that's a really bad Mewtwo. Um, so yeah, I'd avoid the Mewtwo one like the Blake peeps. Um, don't know why I said peeps here. What choice was anyway? So yeah, that was uh, uh, one of the um, highs for me. I think the merchandise was good. Um, surprisingly enough, considering I wasn't really, and this can sound weird, but. Pokemon uh, Sword and Shield. I wasn't really 
like massively wanting to play it, but I thought, hey, I've queued for like nearly six, just over, just under six ish hours. I'm going to go give it a shot. And I actually enjoyed it. Um, I enjoyed Pokemon Sword and Shield while I had. I only had a 10 minute limited demo. Into demo. I didn't get to explore the world of it anymore or any, at all. I got to have a couple of three gym battles. And just as I got to about the gym leader, time demo cut out. And I got to solve the water puzzle, which was just kind of tapping some switches um, and then doing that. So it was a general, it was kind of like a gen, general Pokemon um, gym battle that you would have played on all the DS, 3DS, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance games. So it's kind of just a more graphic y, fancier version of that. Um, the new Pokemon seemed to handle okay. The moves were good. They weren't overpowered. They were generally just your standard bog standard Pokemon moves. So that's that. Um, then we've got kind of so that was another high. I was quite surprised at that. I was quite enjoyed how much I enjoyed the game. So that was a surprise for me. Um, so I may consider investing because I don't have one. I may consider investing in the Switch just so that I can actually play that game in more detail and see what it is. But I'm going to wait a little bit longer. Possibly a Black Friday thing for me or a Christmas thing. I'm not too sure. But yeah, so that was a surprise for me. It was not nice that they'd isolated that onto the next level. I thought that was quite cool. Uh, I kind of miss this from the lows, actually. This is one of the things I wanted to bring up in the lows. Um, the actual structure of the store. Now, it is a pop-up store. So that is what, I, and that's what it was originally advertised with. And it's a Pokemon Center. It should have just been called a Pokemon pop-up store. It really should. I'm sorry. I know people are going to go, but it's Pokemon Center. Arr, it's Pokemon. It should have been a Pokemon pop-up store. It was not big enough. I mean, it, it literally was <sighs> cramped at the best of times. Um, you struggled to, because of the layout, was kind of just like bins on walls in little coves. There was some Pokemon decoration all around it. I'll try and put some photos up so you can see that. Um, but it doesn't have the Pokemon Center feel. It really, really doesn't for me. Having been to some in Japan, there's a lot of attention to detail in them, the ones in Japan. I mean, the flooring has got like Pokeballs on it in Japan and everywhere else. Uh, and like as you walk in and on the windows and walls, they've got like uh, the entire Pokedex just like in wallpaper on it. So the, the attention to detail wasn't what I expected it to be. It was very, that's a low. I should have said that in the low, sorry. And a big low for me because you didn't get the Pokemon Center feel. So that's why I think it should have been called a Pokemon Puppet Store, not the Pokemon Center for me. And that's a, yeah. And I, that was one of the things that a lot of the people I was with picked up on uh, because it cousin kind of, uh, this takes me to a high because really the high was that the people I stood in the queue with, they were fantastic. I mean, the community feel in this queue was a highlight 100% for me because there was we all had a laugh. We were all giggling away, even though we were queuing for a really long time in some really harsh cold weather. There's no animosity. Everybody was fantastic. We really you know, had a good laugh, traded Instagram accounts, you know, became training friends. Um, Pokemon Go. So it was all of that kind of thing. And, you know, there was a Pokemon YouTuber um, and it was a walk by and we had a chat with them and everything. So it was all good fun. And that's one of the things that really, really made the day more palatable, really, was hanging out with these cool people and really, really kind of bonding in only the way the Pokemon community can. And that's one of the things. It's one of the reasons I play Pokemon Go still actively is because the community is fantastic and, you know, very welcoming, very accepting. It doesn't matter who you are, what age you are. I mean, that was one of the coolest things as well about today. There were people of all ages, all races, all colours, all creeds, all preferences, all fandoms, everything. And that is great for me. It's one of the reasons that I love Pokemon still. And I think it's one of the things people don't really take into account when they play Pokemon. You know, there should be no shame in being a Pokemon fan, in my opinion. And the community is incredible. So big props to everybody who was in the queue with me today can't remember all their names because it's been a hell of a long day um but it was great fun and that helped me get through the day and especially when we're we towards the end of our level our energy level started to like lag a bit you're like oh you know we're british we can queue for anything but this was a long queue even by our standards um but yeah it was cool uh a big thanks to all of them and one of the things i really this may sound weird but we were all holding spaces to each other. When we were outside, we were allowed to go to the toilet a lot more easily than when we were inside. And um, so we were like, if take turns, if one person wanted to go to the loo, we guard their space. And so when they came back, if the guard was a, if there was a security guard nearby, they looked at them. We were like, no, they're cool. They just nipped to the loo. That's all right, guys. Um, so that was really cool. 
And at one point, <laughs> literally at one point, I was so cold outside when I nipped into Lou, I saw, oh, Primark. So I ran into Primark and grabbed myself a cheap pair of gloves and a scarf and just, <laughs> just to keep warm. <laughs> it's quite funny. I ended up spending like nine quid on that. Um, but yeah, so that was cool. That was a high for me. A general, I think that's the biggest high of the day for me, other than the cool Pikachu blush and stuff to add to my collection, which one day maybe I'll show you you guys all of it but uh yeah that was a highlight for me genuine highlight um because i thought the community spirit just really elevated the day in my opinion um but yeah i mean overall what i'd say is if you do want to go there like i kind of realize we're getting on on the videos we have 20 minutes but um yeah if you're gonna go i would say i'd certainly consider if you've got children don't go just yet wait a few more weeks because if I, i'd estimate probably for at least a few days after the store's initial opening, it's going to be rammed like it was today. Tomorrow, because they were still turning people away. They ended up turning people away, so they'll probably want to come back. And also, the hardcore fans are going to go again a couple of times. So, genuinely, I think it's worth waiting. Especially, don't go over half term if you're a parent. I warn you now, do not. Unless you go and or ring up in advance or ring someone at Westfields and find out what the queue is like. Because if you're going to go on half term, you're going to join loads and loads of other parents and it's going to be hell if you've got to queue up for as long as we did today with a young kid no chance and there was a moment in the queue today which actually broke my heart it really did there was a mother and a father and a child and they were talking to each other about um the shop and the, 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 they've been queuing for ages just like we had and they were telling the little boy look we're going to be having to go in a minute because we can't stay here and you honestly i could see the little boy's heart breaking and he was showing it in his face in the way only young kids can do when they literally every all their emotion is like in their face and this goes up oh. i was like oh my god this is heartbreaking and um but thankfully they stuck with it and i saw them coming out of the shop and he was just like elated he was like oh my god i got back myself he's like yeah, brilliant that was amazing for me um let's see that but yeah generally don't go during half term if you're gonna go um try and find out if there's a queue if there is a queue i mean like i say look on twitter hashtag pokemon center london was trending today so i check that just to be sure um maybe try and ring westfields if you can their information desk and find out because that'll help you out um take food take drink uh, i had a bottle of water with me which lasted me fine um so take that try and be good like that um wrap up warm check the weather because damn it was cold outside there especially at one part of the queue where we were in the shade it was freezing um so yeah please do kind of bear that in mind when you go there uh next thing take money uh they take cash they take card so do take you know take plenty of money kind of yeah <laughs> check you've got the money in the bank first though because some of it, if you're a big pokemon fan you may spend a lot of money um but I, if you're only going there for the other the other thing i'd say really if you're only going there for one thing like for example your pokemon plush don't try to go there for more than one thing i was going there for the plush i was going there for a t-shirt so i was kind of expecting that i had more than one item i wanted the pin badge was my top priority and unfortunately didn't get it but because i had the other things on there at least i walked away with something after that queue because i even when we we're queuing up we were joking that regardless of how long we spent in that queue you know, we spent six hours in that queue so regardless of what was left we were buying stuff uh, that was it we were walking out with stuff not even a doubt but yeah so kind of have a hierarchy of what you want to buy don't go in there with just one item because if it is just one item you're waiting for then you could end up being really severely disappointed and then walking out with a negative experience which is not what you want if you're a pokemon fan or indeed if not anywhere person really um but other than that you know just i try to for me overall i think the big thing is that i'd say it's an okay shop it's great it's uh, one of the things i would say to pokemon is yeah you've done it you've got pokemon center to london F mad props for doing that thank you very much what i would love to see you do is if you can make this more permanent and bring over one and give it a permanent home in london because today was definitely showed there's a there's a market for it um if you're gonna do that please kind of put the detail in it that you would see in a pokemon center that's full-time yes before people in the comments or wherever going oh but it's a pokemon pop-up store Arr. they're branding it at pokemon center that's the key there pokemon center london it was on the branding on the window it's literally on the you know 
it doesn't say on the tool, on the things here, but it does say on the receipt, which I won't show because I've got my credit card details on it. But yeah, you've got to bear that in mind. It is not the decor you'd expect from Pokemon Center. It's not the detail you'd expect from Pokemon Center if you went to a London-based one. So, sorry, sorry, London based one, a, Japan, a Japanese based one. So, that for me is something that everybody should be aware of is that it is not, not the level of detail you expect. If you think, if you go to one of these stores in the London one, you're going to love it. If you've never been to a Japanese one, don't get me wrong, you are going to love it because it is Pokemon, it's great. But if you go there with a high level of expectation, expecting all the detail, that you would normally see in a Pokemon Center, then you're probably going to be slightly a bit miffed. Because, I mean, you granted they did have a nice picture on the wall you could pose out like they do in some stores, but in Japan they have giant models that you can stand physically next to and take pictures. I mean, there's one with a Charizard, a Mega Charizard with a Pikachu on it that you can stand next to in one of the Pokemon Center in Japan. There's a giant Rayquaza that's breaking through the roof in another and you can stand next to that and have your picture taken. Here, the only Pikachu you could really have your picture taken with was in the window. So you, could, you couldn't even get near it. You literally had to stand in front of the window and to have a, to have a picture and taken near it. And that was chaos because everyone wanted to do it. So it was kind of just a bad idea there, really. It's, so the attention to detail is not what, they're, what you'd expect for that branding. So I would definitely say... It's worth a visit if you're a hardcore Pokemon fan and even like a medium kind of a Pokemon fan are worth a visit. If you're just a casual fan, wait till it calms down and then go get a visit. But yeah, I, I, it was a great day. I really think the community made the day for me. I think the love and the fun we all had today, top notch. That was what I would say was the best part of that. Oh, and also, I'm going to bring it out again because I just love it so cute. The little bit you hear is so great. Um, but yeah, yeah, for me, I'm just trying to fell over. Um, but yeah, just for me, I think it was marred mainly by the bad organization and the lack of attention to detail once you got inside the store. Um, that is, I think, the key. Um, there's just the little touches that they missed and they could have easily done. I mean, literally, it was only like sticking laminates on walls, which is what they did. And they could have stuck more laminates on there. They could have gone for some little hidden details in there. Um, just stuff like that, stuff that you would expect um, if you were kind of a hardcore fan. And I think the best word I can use is um, and I'm, it's underwhelming. The experience inside the store for me was underwhelming and whether that's because I'd spent six hours and months of hype previously waiting for the thing to actually open or whether or not it's because I've got a level of expectation because I've been to other stalls I'm sorry I keep bringing that up but um yeah it, it's a case of kind of I kind of think a combination of both I think the anticipation and the reality kind of met each other and they just didn't mesh together that well they kind of went exploded um so yeah but yeah it's open now westfield's open till november go along if you're a big pokemon fan if you're not too much if you're kind of a casual fan wait till it kind of peters out towards the end of no, uh, towards the end of the time which i think is mid-november ish but in the meantime if you are um new to my channel please do click the like button and because uh, it really helps all likes do help um, as every youtuber says i'm going to reiterate all likes do help and if you want to uh, follow more content from this not just Pokemon stuff, maybe a bit of Pokemon Go stuff might come out. Maybe you might get to see my level 98 Mew Mask that I caught today. Yes. Um, and, you know, any of my interviews from MCM Comic Con and any of the videos I do there, um, do, you know, that'd be great. And also look for that Comic Con GU1 on Twitter um, to see some images from the queue as well. I'll post some on the video too so you can see that. But yeah, yeah, thanks for watching. I realise it's been a long video, but a uh, lot to cover. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Take care. Um, and remember, got to catch them all.